Welcome back to North Point Plus Podcast. We're in episode 105, and we're really happy to be here. Hey, we're having fun. Yeah. In the studio. Behind the scenes. That's right. Um, I'm Chris Sullivan. I Hi, Chris. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm guest hosting this week. That's right. And I'm in the right chair. Ah, um, well, there we go. Yes. And I'm here with our lead pastor. <sighs> that sounds Rick so official. Rubble. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't too loud. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rick Rubel, who also did the new sermon series this week called Blueprints. Yeah. Um, so what is Blueprints about? Wow. We're just jumping right in, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it, I, it is a series from the Book of Acts, and it's uh, the premise is that in the Book of Acts... Oh, you like the new mug? Oh. Um, just thought I'd mention that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The, the the premise is that that the book of Acts is descriptive. Um, it describes what happened in the first century with the church, and that that creates a blueprint for us as a church for what the church should look like in the twenty first century. So yeah, that's, so that's going to be the overview. Yeah. I just kind of wanted to get that out there because if people miss this week, which I hope they didn't, because it was a really great week, you know, they might be surprised because we were just on pain and suffering and Job. <laughs> so <laughs> what I actually, it, it's funny because after, after the Job series, I thought what better um, way to follow that up was than to say the Holy Spirit has come so that we can live with power and not just wallow in our yeah. suffering. So yeah. That is really cool. I actually had somebody come up to me after the service and they were like, they really just transitioned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. good. Good good uh recognition. Yeah. Like, yeah. You were there. Holy yeah. Spirit did it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it's really cool too to jump into the series of how the Holy Spirit comes into us, how we act as a body, right. and to kick off rooted this week as well of, you know, coming together as a body and watching how the Holy Spirit works through us during this study. Um, so for anybody who hasn't been listening to what's going on, another kind of like information, uh, yeah. what is rooted? What are we doing with this? How can you join? Yeah, I, I'm, I talked about it just a, just a tad in the message to say rooted is really about seven rhythms of um, practices that are a part of what it means to follow Jesus, to be a disciple, um, for for lots of us, many of those things are just normal things, but some others will stretch us. And um, for some people, maybe they've been coming to church and have known about Jesus a long time and have said, yeah, I want to follow him, but they've never really, um, re really embraced those rhythms. Yeah. And uh, it's such a cool thing because I think dealing with those rhythms will help people grow closer to Christ, and help live out their faith in a way that's just really practical. And uh, if you've been around for a while, I just think it's a really cool connection that um, a year ago we did Experiencing God, talking about seeing where God's working and joining Him there, and that the connection, a, a connection to Rooted, is that it really was birthed in Kenya which is a place that we've just started a church and that we have a partnership with Missions of Hope International. Uh, really just cool a cool connection. thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was actually explaining this to some of my coworkers the other day and talking about this study and yeah. also how we had this um, Mohi come in and speak to us. And as I'm saying this, I was like, I didn't even think about the connection and it's yeah. all coming out. And so I love that you bring that up. That's really neat. Yeah. Um, cool stuff. So, so rooted is about this, th those seven rhythms. Um, we'll will in life groups. We're not talking about it on Sunday morning, but in life groups, um, we'll be exploring those rhythms, living them out, living them out together, experiencing them together, which will be really really cool. Um, uh, the blueprint series is is about really taking a look at the rhythms of the church that existed in the first century and living those out as well. So it's a, it's a, the best way to describe it is it's, they're running in parallel paths, even though they're in separate lanes. Right. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, but the thing with Rooted is you can't actually do this study unless you come and get connected into a life group. Um, so you could probably figure out how to yeah. do it on your own, <laughs> but it but it's not going to be nearly as um, impactful. Right. Um, and and a really cool thing if you're watching and you're not in a life group, it's not too late. You could probably still do it no matter when you're watching this podcast. 
although if it's weeks from now, that's probably not as good. But if it's this week, yeah. um, we just had a couple of people that just signed up today and um, are going to join our group. And, and so that's, a, that's just a really cool thing. It's um, being connected with people is what is going to make it really powerful. So um, do that. We had last, uh, well, uh, this is coming out on Tuesday. On Sunday night, we had, a, we had our big uh, kickoff, and we had uh, over 120 people that are going to be involved in groups, which is really, really cool. I mean, really we cool. did it downstairs, and it was packed It was there. full, yeah. So it was cool. It was really neat seeing yeah. everybody come out. So how do you think that went, the kickoff? Oh, I thought, I thought it was great. Uh, it, um, Jake did a great job just in, ter in, in terms of encouraging people, kind of setting the stage. And then the conversations that took place because uh, Sunday night was really kind of the kickoff, the, the week one stuff where now people will s begin to do their um, daily readings and, um, and to just kind of process stuff. I thought it went great. The, the groups all split out, had great conversations, lots of energy, activity. Uh, ice cream. Uh, ice cream. Yeah. It, uh, God's working. So, yeah, good yeah. stuff. Definitely. Um, you know, we were there, my husband and I, uh, the Sullivans, whoop, whoop, life group plug. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we're just starting a life group. So we're starting new it. leaders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, bright eyed, bushy tailed. Yep. Uh, we haven't been broken down. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> just off. kidding. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so it was, it's pretty cool that we're starting this with the rooted series, um, yeah. and just how our life group can grow together uh, and connect through this. So I'm I'm really excited. Yeah, it, it's gonna it's gonna knit each group together, and so for you guys starting a new group, it's gonna it's just gonna be great in creating a level of depth and relationship. Um, and commitment to Jesus, keeping Jesus in the center. So it's not just people getting together and saying, well, let's just hang out. It r really does provide substance and focus in, in a way that's just going to be great. So, yeah, and good it's stuff. really pushing our mission, you know, for the church as well. You know, yeah. all people living a life fully devoted to Christ, moving yep. towards a life fully devoted to Christ. So um, we're living that out yeah. in our small groups together. Um that's really cool. Yeah, good good stuff. It really is a, a um, an expression of our mission um, in very clear ways and helping people to take next steps no matter what those next steps are. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if you're not in a life group, think about joining. Um, I, I would say, you know, if you can't make it, there will be a next time is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing some Yeah, talk. Yeah, I, I think that our model, um, we don't know yet, because you never know what the future is going to be. But I think our model will be that when we launch new life groups in the future, we'll launch them with Rooted um, that b because we believe it's going to just be uh, a really great way to help people get to know each other, help them get to know Jesus, and really set the stage for, for future groups. So, yeah, good stuff. All right. That's awesome. Um, okay. So we talked about Rooted. Um, how can you join? Let's talk a little bit about this Sri Lanka trip that you were mentioning now. Yeah. Um, you know, when this podcast comes out, you'll be on your way. Yeah, we, we leave Tuesday at 1230. Uh, we fly from Lansing to Chicago, where we then sit in the Chicago airport for seven hours <laughs> waiting, uh, waiting to take off. We'll fly then from Chicago to Doha, Qatar, and then um, fly from Doha to Colombo, uh, Sri Lanka, which is on the west side of the island. And, uh, and then we'll travel to Kandy, which is in the center of the island, which is where Limonin and Denise are. Is that uh, another flight or are you going to... No, we'll, we'll travel. It's about two car. and a half hours by car. Okay, yeah, got it. Something like that. So, so is that four or five flights, you said? Three flights. Three flights. So okay. Lansing to Chicago, Chicago to Doha, Doha to, um, to Colombo. And the total will be about 30 hours from the time that we leave Lansing until we land in, um, in Colombo. My guess is it's probably going to be 36-ish hours from the time we leave home until we get to, um, uh, to where Denise and Laminda live. And then it will probably be some indeterminate amount of time before our bodies say, okay, yeah, we're coherent again. Right. Um, so... 
quite a trip. Yeah. Um, so for those uh, who are curious, you know, what is the plan when you guys get over there? How are you expecting to help? Yeah, um, the, this is a different, it really is a different um, model of a mission trip than many. M oftentimes when a church goes on a mission trip, you go to, to try and really do something, to do some kind of activity, uh, you know, to build a, a building, to, uh, uh, to run a VBS, something like that. Uh, um, Denise and Laminda are missionaries f um, for... North Point, and so what we really want to do is just encourage them. Our our the there's really two two goals for this trip. One is to is to bless and encourage um, uh, Denise and Laminda, and the other is for us to have a firsthand look at um, how uh, at what God's doing there to to just see what what's going on in their mission. And there are some really cool things that are happening um, in that. That that I think when we get back we'll be able to to help uh, share with people and and tell firsthand that that we see, um, so so that's really it. So we're going to get to see a lot of what they're doing. We're going to get to be involved in that ministry in some ways. So uh, Larry Carter is is uh, a part of our team, and I think he's probably going to have an opportunity to preach. Um, in churches on both the Sundays that, that we're there, probably I will as well. Um, we're going to join up with a group from uh, Kentucky that's going to meet us there as well, and uh, and their preacher's going, and so he'll have a chance to preach too. So that that'll that's be awesome. that'll be a cool thing. Um, one backstory that I can tell at this point that um, it'll be even more fun to tell. I think once once we get back, Don and Kim McKeel, who are who are a part of the trip, who are part of North Point. Don's grandfather was a missionary to Sri Lanka oh. um, like a whole bunch of years ago. And Don's mom is still alive. She's 89 years old. And, um, and they left Sri Lanka when she was six. So 83 years ago, she left Sri Lanka. She only has just little tiny memories, but she's, she's so excited oh. about Don going to where she was as a kid and where her dad um, did ministry that, you know, was a missionary there. And so, uh, there's, there's just some really cool things that are happening at that level. Um, she gave a financial gift to help bless Denise and Laminda. It's just fun. And you mentioned fun stuff. the financial gift. So, yeah. you know, how can those of us who aren't going on this trip, how can we help and support? Yeah, th there's still an opportunity that you can give. We're, we're taking a gift from the church, a financial gift from the church that's that's significant, that's going to bless them. But we can we can just continue to add to that, really. So if people want to, the easiest way to, is to do that electronically. The stuff we talk about all the time, send a, a text with the word gift to give. Chat <laughs> yeah, 833-CHAT-NCC, 242-833-242-8622. Um, and there's a pull down there that says Sri Lanka. And if you mark it there, um, we will be happy to deliver that uh, that gift to them, um, which will be cool. Excellent. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, I think prayer is the yes. big thing. So you yeah. guys are going over there. You're allowing the Holy Spirit to use you however he sees fit. Um, so part of that is us praying as a yeah. body um, that you guys would be sensitive to that and that, you know, God would be working and moving. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, please pray for us. Yeah. yeah. And so when do you guys return? How long are you gone? We leave on the 12th. We get back on the 25th. So we leave on Tuesday. We come back on Monday in two weeks. Okay. Um, and I think we'll be exhausted when we get back. Probably so. Yeah. yeah. You'll, you might need a little bit of time to rest. Um, yeah, a little bit of jet lag and all that good stuff. They're nine and a half hours in, ahead of us. So oh. uh, if it's noon here in Lansing, it's 930 at night in Sri Lanka. Will you still be working and making sure that you're calling in every day? And Probably yeah. not. <laughs> I, I actually, before before we started the podcast, I was uh, just going to to check on my cell phone uh, on our cell phone plan, yeah, and just trying to say, do I want to implement the international stuff in case? Um, because if you don't, and then you use it you get killed financially. So I'm s still working that out. But yeah, don't don't email or text for the next couple okay. of weeks. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Scratch that off. Yeah, that's next. right. Uh, um, well, I mean, we kind of started this episode off uh, really laughing and joking, <laughs> having a great time. And I just, I don't want to bring this up right now, but 
I thought I'd maybe just slip it in that sometimes our jokes don't really go well. <laughs> you know, that Rick doesn't always kill it. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good yesterday. To, um, I, I don't usually tell jokes like for the sake of a joke. And I remember telling that joke as, you know, years and years and years ago. And people always laughed, but it did not work at all. It worked a little better second service than it did first. Okay. okay. But I, I should have just left it out. But I thought, uh, no, oh, in, for, in for a pound, in for a, no, in for a penny, in for a pound. So I tried it second service. It didn't work either. If you, if you want to hear a bad joke, make sure you go back and listen to the message. Um, but you know what? You still had us laughing. <laughs> you know, we had our moments. You always get us with Ohio State. So, you know. Um, I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, does that ever, you know, speaking of, you know, you're up there and you're, you know, trying to trying to give us the message that the Holy Spirit wants. Um, yeah. Does that ever sometimes deter you or kind of, like, get you off your game of, like, what you were hoping to say and communicate? Oh, when people don't respond? Yeah. Well, I, I guess... Um, you know, I, I, if you watch me preach or whatever, I always use a manuscript, and I use a manuscript because um, uh, in the past, when we, especially when you do three services, it's like, did I say that? Have I said that already? Keep, keeping things straight in my mind, it's just easier to have, right. have that there to be able to follow through on. Um, knowing that um, and, and having an opportunity to speak fairly often, stuff's always going to happen. You know, people get up and leave, you know, when, you, when you're saying something real serious or, that's, or that's, that really is coming to grips with something that's very difficult and somebody gets up and walks out, you're thinking, is that because of what I just said? Or, you know, did they just get a phone call or whatever it is? And, um, Rest your break. You <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> do they just have too much coffee? Whatever it is. Um, when you tell a, a story or whatever and people don't respond, you, you're trying to sort through that but uh, for Am me I speaking English? Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly um i think that there is a pro a part of the process in speaking where uh, as and this relates to the message yesterday where you commit the process and the words to the holy spirit and just trust that he's working through that process and there have been some times that i've spoken that i've thought that was just terrible you know it was it was not my best presentation it was not my best words um and and lots of people afterwards will come up and say man that just really god used that to help me um and there are other times that i think boy i that was really really good and it's like eh, yeah it was okay <laughs> you know i'll come yeah. home and deb say eh, it wasn't your best uh, so well okay She's so, honest. yeah that's yeah. right <laughs> appreciate that about her so um it's it's just fun to see what happens uh yeah. and 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 my style is different than a lot of people in that i'm not like i would never describe myself as an orator kind of thing i i just talk you know i i it's very conversational for me and when i tell jokes in the office oftentimes there's the same kind of response that's <laughs> sylvia right now is laughing off in the wings um because yeah they don't always go the way i hoped so yeah, yeah. Well, you mentioned, um, you know, that you want the Holy Spirit to be leading what you're saying yeah. um, when you're working through this material. and But especially what we're talking about is uh, receiving the Holy Spirit, you know, mm -hmm. in the new church. Do you maybe want to talk a little bit about um, what is the role of the Holy Spirit? Um, and maybe we can get into a little bit of uh, how this works. Yeah, the, it's, it's interesting because the text yesterday, Jesus said, um, the Holy Spirit's going to come with power. And you're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and ends of the earth. But that whole concept that the Holy Spirit's going to come with power, okay, what's that mean? And I didn't, I really didn't um, dive as much as we could for sure into that concept. When the, when the Holy Spirit comes into us, he really does give us the ability to, um, to do things that we couldn't do on our own, um, to say no to sin in a way that like it's always had uh, its hold on us yeah. and the holy spirit gives us the ability to walk away from that to break that pattern to break that the the strength of that the holy spirit um brings to mind scripture the scripture tells us the holy spirit will 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 give us words holy spirit will intercede 
to God, like when we pray and don't have the right words, the Holy Spirit is the one who, who is able to take what we feel in our gut, but we can't express, and, and, and in a sense kind of translate it to God. Mm-hmm. Um, the Holy Spirit uh, oftentimes warns us to say, danger, Will Robinson, don't go down that path. Uh, it, you know, it's not a good path. Um, the Holy Spirit, lots I know of that times, yeah. <laughs> the the Holy Spirit, lots of times will will just prompt us uh, uh, to do, you know, to take a step of action that may be a good thing, but it's not the kind of thing that we would think of normally. It's the Holy Spirit that is he he sees God sees from a perspective that we can't, and God knows, you know, God knows that this person needs somebody to reach out to him, and so. Uh, the Holy Spirit is is there, kind of whispering in your ear, saying, "Hey, why don't you reach out to to this particular person?" And you do, and they say, "Oh, wow! I uh, thanks so much because I I was in desperate need of encouragement at that point yeah. in time." So yeah, I always love those instances where the Holy Spirit is kind of nudging me, um, and then when you go and talk to that person, you're like. Oh my goodness! Okay, God, I'm I'm so glad that yeah. I answered that call versus walking away from it. Um, and how much not only it might have blessed that other person, but how much it's changing me by then answering what the Holy Spirit yeah. is prompting me to do. Yeah, and, and it really is that sense of um, when we when we listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, when um, when we recognize that that is God speaking to us through His Spirit, um, the more we do that the easier it is to recognize his voice, which it, it's, uh, it just becomes a lot clearer. Well, you say recognizing the voice and listening. Um, I'm sure there were some people out there thinking, you know, like, well, how is the Holy Spirit going to speak? Is it, you know, audible? Is, is the heavens going to light up and we're going to fall off our donkeys and we're going to hear a loud voice? Um, you because know. we all have donkeys that yeah. we ride. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but what does that look like when we hear from the Holy Spirit and what should we be sensitive to? Yeah, um, that's a that's a that's a great question. Um I would say there are there are probably some times that God speaks in an audible voice, but that's often rare. That's uh, I, uh, you're not allowed to say that, right? That um, that doesn't happen very often that God speaks in an audible voice. There are some times that God speaks uh, through other people in an audible voice that that they will say something and it's like, oh, that cuts right to your heart, and you know that that's God speaking to you through through what they say. Um, oftentimes, I think it it really is just this sense that you that you have a sense. Oh, that's God. That 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 that's God that's given that leading or that prompt. And a lot of times, it's because it's the last thing that I would think of in my flesh. You know, it, it, if I'm if Rick's just being Rick, the last thing I would do is be sensitive to that particular thing. And and so if I am sensitive to it. I, I trust that that's the Holy Spirit. Um, so uh, for me, uh, you know, I, uh, my role my, as a pastor, my, um, like part of who I am as a person, I care about people. If somebody comes to mind that, um, that it's just random, it's like, I haven't thought about that person for five weeks, the, I typically trust that that's the Holy Spirit that that is bringing that person to mind, and so I'll either pray for them, send them a text, write them a note, do something like that. And what's the worst that can happen? That you know that they may say, "Why did you do that for?" Yeah. Um, but more often than not, it really is. Oh man, I, I thanks, 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 thanks so much for reaching out. So yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, and, and you know you don't know how exactly it will affect them or bless them right. by listening to those promptings. Um, so you know, as we walk in our faith for a longer period of time, it does become easier to listen to the voice of mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit and to discern that. Um, but maybe for somebody who's new in their walk, are there any dangers that we might want to stay away from? Um, from things that we might think are God's voice or the Holy Spirit, but how would we help? How would they discern that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, anytime uh, the 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 most immediate um, filter to use is does this line up with Scripture? Which yeah. which means for someone who's new to following Jesus that may not know a lot of Scripture, it's like how do I know that? Well, that's when it's great to be in a life group 
Uh, that's when it's great to have some people who can, who are more mature spiritually that can say, uh, no, you think that God is leading you to steal that from your company. Uh, that's, that, that's probably yeah. not God. Uh, not probably. That's not God. Um, and so uh, I think the, the, the filter of does this line up with Scripture is, uh, is a great filter. And um, the, probably the touchy-feely part of that is if I think, oh, yeah, that's the Holy Spirit, but in my gut, there's this tension that's like you're trying to convince yourself it's the Holy Spirit, um, but the, but there's this angst that's there. It's probably not the Holy Spirit. Um, th- now, the flip side of that is there are some times that in our nature we think, ah, I don't want to do that. I, mm-hmm. I, I, that's That can't be God. But there's this persistent uh, um, persistency. Is that a word? There, there is this persistent um, ping from the Holy Spirit right. that says, "Yeah, that's what you need to do. Yeah, you need to you need to branch and become a life group leader." <laughs> um, yes, Lord. <laughs> um, that 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 uh, that you recognize over time. Yeah, that is what I need to do. Even though it's uncomfortable, even though that's a big step of faith, even though I, you don't feel equipped. That that. You know, and it may be speaking up for what's right at work. You know, that kind of thing. That that you think, ah, that's not my role. Um, but the Holy, but but there is this sense. No, I've I've got to speak up. I've got to speak up because of who I am. Because it's consistent with my character. Um, it's consistent with what Jesus is doing my, in my life. So, um, I I hope that's helpful. Uh, let me let me say one other thing about the Holy Spirit because I I didn't go there at all. Um, this next week in Jake's message, although we, I haven't talked to Jake a lot about what, what he's preaching, but what happens in the book of Acts in Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit comes and just goes crazy miraculously, um, the apostles speak in a language that they've never heard, there's some supernatural stuff going on. It's easy to, th- to, uh, uh, it's easy to th- Think about the Holy Spirit only in light of supernatural working of the Holy Spirit. So, so when somebody comes up and says, "I want to pray for you," and and somebody has a physical affliction and it's healed instantly in a supernatural kind of way, right. a tumor goes away, um, you know, cancer is gone, um, that that kind of thing. It's easy to to think about the Holy Spirit only in a supernatural working kind of context, and the Holy Spirit does that sometimes. Um, but the Holy Spirit does it when the Holy Spirit's ready to do it, and and we don't have any control over that. Um, I think it's much more significant for us long term to think about the Holy Spirit living inside us and guiding us on a daily basis to be the people that God has called us to be, that he saved us to be, to be the church that God's called us to be. Yeah. Um, that's, that is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not to just make people go, ooh, ah, like they're watching fireworks. Um, it really is to draw attention to God in a way that is consistent and that, that pulls people towards him. Yeah. Um, thanks for explaining that, because I think that's that's something really important, especially for somebody who's new stepping into this. Yeah. And I'm just going to quote some Rick Rubel back at you because, you know, talking about like discerning God's voice, you know, you said um, going to scripture and that's the number one, right? Is yeah. It consistent with God's word. Is it consistent with scripture? Um, but two things that you've harped on, you know, are, uh, is it God's character? Yep. Yeah, right. You know, and then also, you know, seeking wise counsel. Uh, and you kind of said that, but, yeah. you know, just kind of condensing that, that especially if you don't know scripture, you know, you have people in your life, hopefully, um, that you can look up to that, you know, are godly people who can kind of right. help steer you and guide you. Yeah. Yep. That's good advice wherever that came from. Yeah, <laughs> 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 exactly. Um, smart man. Okay. <laughs> Uh, must be the Holy Spirit. Must, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, yes. Ab- obviously. Uh, I like what you just said, though, that we don't have control over God's power within us. And I felt like that was just something to really harp, you know, that we we are not necessarily harnessing God's power, that we are just a vessel and God is, you know, using us. Yeah, we can block. We can block the power of God. We, we can become an obstacle. 
um, but we can't control it. Um, uh, the God's God is going to do what God's going to do. The question is, are we going to be a, a willing part? Uh, you know, someone that He can choose to use willingly, or is He going to have to go around us um, to accomplish His will? And uh, the whole that whole concept of the Holy Spirit coming with power is that we become um, instruments of God's grace that that just expand the glory of God and draw more and more attention to him um, in, in powerful ways. Wow. I for sure want to be used by God yeah. to live out his story instead of him going around me. Yes. Uh, that definitely yeah. sounds like a way better end. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and, and much more fulfilling. Uh, you know, it's, it's like, um, I, I had a conversation. I don't, I don't know if anybody else thinks this or not, but yesterday um, I talked to Jamie last night and, and said, I just felt like worship yesterday was so good. Uh, it was, you know, as a musician, it was good musically, but that's not what matters. What matters is that God's presence was was there, and people, the level of participation of people, it it just was great worship. I God, God was honored in that. And, um, I agree. Being there uh, in first service, it I felt it. Yeah. You know, and you just feel that sometimes yep. on Sundays. I mean, you I, ideally we want to feel that you know every week. You know right. that we're all worshiping the Lord together. And you know when you close your eyes, uh, I like to just imagine like we're just in His throne room, yeah. uh, around Him at His feet. And it's just such a cool thing when you can just like hear everybody singing yeah. together. Um, yeah. I I said to Jamie, you know, nine years ago when I came. The worship was good. I, I remember the first Sunday that we were here when we were just kind of spying, and and we walked away and said, that was really, really good. And they had just had a transition. Jamie led that day, but she led as, a, as just a volunteer kind of substitute. Um, and it was good. It, I, it was good. But uh, yesterday, I just had this sense of, wow, I, I don't know that I ever imagined that it could be this good. Um, uh, and, and good in, in the sense of the focus on God in the right way. Um, I, re, I remember it, so many things go through your mind. Uh, this is not really the topic, but that it, it is because it's the Holy Spirit. I remember my first fall here in the, in the fall of 2014, and we, I, I did a series, and um, it, was, it was all about stuff that happened in Galilee with Jesus. And, and I remember saying, um, one of the things that I hope for North Point is that that it becomes a place, that it is a place where the worship is so compelling that people, when they walk in, they just have a sense that God's here, he's doing something, and I want to be a part of it. Yeah. And, and, and yesterday in the service, I just thought, this is what I hoped for nine years ago. And, um, and it's, it's not because of me. And it's not because of Jamie, it's because of God, you know, God, God, but it's also because people have been willing instruments um, to, to help try and move in that direction and to try and be used by God in that way. Yeah. And that's so beautiful. And being yeah. a part of the body, you know, um, it's really cool to see how God is moving in our church in yeah. our community, um, in the town of DeWitt, you yep. know, and St. John's and Langsburg, yes. even Langsburg. Yeah. <laughs> I know Lansing, um, yeah. Grand Ledge, uh, we can keep naming them. Yep. Still. Yep. <laughs> Mid Michigan. Um, exactly. Uh, it's really cool to be a part of this. Um, and I know, you know, my husband and I, we talk about that, you know, coming to this church and I feel like we always say that, but it's just true that, you know, God called us here, but we sense something and yeah. there's something that he's doing specifically here and the way that our body just shows up and wants to be connected, wants to be the hands and feet. It's so special. It's yeah. so amazing. Yeah. And that's, and that's again, because of God's people, it, it really is. Yeah. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, I love that. Keep coming back in there. I know. So um, we're kind of just going over some talking points because we didn't really have a lot of questions this week. So send questions. Yes. Send questions. There's a plug. Please send your questions. Um, maybe we can talk a little bit about the fruit of the Spirit. 
Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Galatians and what happens or what traits you'll see in us um, as non-believers when we're not walking in the spirit, um, you know, evilness and wickedness um, and, you know, deceit and temptation. Uh, but then also what happens when we are walking in yeah. the spirit um, and the fruits of the spirit. So I don't know if you wanted to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. It, you know, what's funny in, in prepping the message, um, th- th- that was probably... Um, one of my favorite things in terms of my personal work on the message, I don't know that I've ever really looked at um, Galatians 5 with a lens of, the, uh, with, a, with a focus on the Holy Spirit. And so when you look at all of Galatians 5, uh, that long passage that I read from verse 16 to verse 26, it really is, okay, this is, this is what the purpose of the Holy Spirit is, and this is how he works, and this is what it looks like, and this is what it doesn't look like. Um, I, I, I believe with all my heart that when we talk about being mature spiritually, that the, that, um, the fruit of the Spirit, that's, that is one of those, um, in a sense, kind of scorecards that we can say, how am I doing? How am I doing at love and joy and peace, mm. patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. How am, I, how am I doing all that? And again, well, we've talked about this before in messages. It's not the kind of thing that you buckle down and say, I'm going to be good. I'm going to be joyful. Um, it is as the Holy Spirit lives in us, that's just the natural thing that happens. It, it just happens naturally. Again, it's uh, not in our power. Right. Yeah. It, 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 he's the one who does that, who brings that fruit to bear in our lives. And, um, and it is a really cool thing when you think, oh, where was I five years ago? Uh, man, I'm in a completely different place. Um, yeah. and, and, and it's because of the Holy Spirit. That's pretty cool because they have one really big question with the Rooted series is how has Jesus changed you? Yeah. And I was thinking about that when you were talking about this sermon specifically um, and then going through Galatians and the fruit of the Spirit. Um, and I was kind of like taking notes and thinking like, yeah, you know, my life is so markedly different being that, you know, without the Holy yeah. Spirit, with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like I, um, I, I hope my illustration of our house in Ohio um, made sense and connected because it, it was um, – that first year where we were hauling water, um, it was okay. I, you know, we loved the house. We loved the property. We did lots of stuff. But it was just a lot of work. It, you know, I, I um, two or three times a week, I was making two or three trips a day to bring water to the house. And then when I went home, Deb said, you know, you didn't tell the, you didn't tell the part of the story that our oldest son, Joe, who at that point was probably, I don't know, 15, 14, 15, somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he was really, the, uh, hit one of his jobs was the keeper of the hose that oh, winter. Oh, man. And um, if you think so about... You were upset about the task? or was he, <laughs> Well, <yeah>. <laughs> I was happy to have an older son <laughs> um, because, uh, you know, just uh, pulling a hose is hard enough, but a hose that has water in it is harder, and a hose that has partially frozen water in it is even harder. And it was, it just was such a mess to bring that hose into the basement so that it would thaw, so that, w- and then we wouldn't put it out until 10 o'clock in the morning, so the sun would be warm enough on the dark colored hose that it would keep the water flowing from one place to another. Um, it was a lot of work. And, and then the, you know, the, the switch that flipped when we connected to city water, it was like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> Life is so good. And it really is that sense, uh, you know, um, trying to live the life of a Christian on your own strength is, um, it's just hard. Yeah, you can, you can try and do it, but it's hard. God didn't design it that way. And, um, and living in the power of the Holy Spirit, it's like, oh, this is so much better, so much better. Right. Yep. I think that is a good depiction. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that, you know, going back to joke, that we don't have struggles. Right. Um, but then we have those fruits of the Spirit in those struggles. Right. 
Um, yeah. You can still find joy in the suffering. Yep. Um, which, you know, maybe to non-believers that sounds really crazy. Yeah. Uh, but it's true. You know, right. You can still find that peace and that joy. Um, yeah. And that's really beautiful. Yep. Um, okay, so we've talked about the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. Yep. Um, okay, you did mention um, a quote by, and I can't remember who it was, um, but basically you were talking about the three C's, um, that when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, um, that we confess our sin, we commit to the Lordship of Jesus, and we confirm, uh, conform to the Word. Do you want to yeah. just kind of go over those? Because I yeah. think those are good points. Yeah, um, and, and it really is about being filled with the Spirit, not just the, the, you know, when we become a follower of Jesus, we um, we have the promise, Acts 2, that the Holy Spirit comes and lives in us. Mm-hmm. But even after that point in time, um, there is a, there is a sense, excuse me, there's a sense in which we, um, we continue to be filled with the Spirit, that we're refilled with the, with the Holy Spirit. And, and how do we do that as, as followers of Jesus? It really is that there is this consistent process of confessing sin, mm-hmm. of, of coming clean with God and, and saying, yeah, I, I love you, but I've been messing up in this area and I want to give it back to you. Um, uh, conforming, uh, or well, drawing a line in the sand and, and saying, no, this, I'm, I, I choose to follow Jesus no matter what, no matter what the cause is, uh, or no matter what the consequences are. And then um, con- conforming to, to uh, what we find in God's Word and living that out on a daily basis. That, th- that when we do that, the more that we do that, the more that we live out that process, the more the Holy Spirit um, fills us. Um, the, um, uh, I don't know, a bunch of years ago, I shared a little book that w- I can't tell you who wrote it, but it's called My Heart, Christ's Home. Um, yeah, My Heart, Christ's Home. It's a, it's a, it's just this little book and it talks about Jesus coming to live in us and that when he does, um, he takes. He wants to take over every corner of the house. He doesn't want to just be in the living room. He wants to be in the bedroom. He wants to be in the closet. He wants to be in the basement. He wants to be in the attic. He he wants to uh, to have all of it. And and in order for that to happen, the Holy Spirit has to just keep coming in and filling us up. Where where we give up those, you know, we give up that chest of drawers that's hidden away that we have stuff that we don't want anybody to see mm-hmm. that um that's that's where god does his best work right um so i guess with this this is kind of also a little bit of a blueprint uh-huh uh, <laughs> uh, nice, yeah. nice tie there yes there we go uh for believers who feel maybe stagnant that they're not yeah. they're not growing or they're not hearing from the holy spirit yeah, yeah, absolutely. That um, if you're in a place that you feel like you're just kind of going through the motions, I think I think it's a it's a really good pattern, a good blueprint to say, okay, is there sin in in my life that I just need to confess? I need to let go of. Um, do I need to draw a line in the sand in a new way um, and and to make that commitment? Um, do I need to uh, change? And conform more to the will of God, the way of God, the Word of God, um, in a way that I haven't been. And so, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, on the last one, conforming to the way of God, you said not culture, and that one was a really big one, um, just because it's so easy to go along with culture nowadays, right? And you spoke a little bit about how Acts was for the church then, um, yep. but we can use it as a blueprint now. Yep. But things have changed, and you know, culture has changed. So maybe could you talk a little bit about um, taking that and moving it forward in today's culture, but also not being of today's culture? Yeah, um, I don't know that this is the answer to your question, but um, it's on my mind right now, and so I'm trusting that that's the Holy Spirit. The we, it's easy in our access to information, to entertainment, to media, whatever it is, it's easy to have, to hear voices all the time. You know, hop in the car, turn on the radio. Um, Go home, turn on the TV, um, turn on your computer. There's ads, stuff you can look at, all, all that kind of stuff. The more we listen to the world around us, the more the world's 
mindset makes sense to us. It it becomes normal. You know, you watch movies where people are killed, are murdered over and over and over again. You think, oh, yeah, people get murdered all the time. You watch people that are um, in intimate relationships with people who they're not married to over and over and over again. You think, oh, yeah, that's the most normal thing in the world. Um, and, and so that that's conforming to the world instead of conforming to the image of Christ. And so it really is an important thing to hear the voice of God, whether that's through worship music, whether it's um, scripture, whether it's listening to, um, you know, to, to good Bible teachers, whatever it is, to meditation. It, it really is when we, when we hear God's voice consistently, um, it becomes a lot easier to recognize it and to follow his voice rather than that the world becomes lots less attractive. Right. So um, probably a good practice is, especially with this, if we're having trouble hearing from the Holy Spirit, is maybe we need better boundaries in our life of, like you said, going to things that are pleasing to the Holy Spirit right. to Christ and maybe setting boundaries and not watching those shows or not Absolutely. listening to those songs yep. or whatever it is. Yep. Um and, you know, it might put us in a not so favorable light to some people in our lives and in our in the marketplace. Right. Um, maybe even family members. I know I have some family members who are not walking with Christ. And when I talk about my day to day or how I live my life, that's very strange to them. Yeah. Um, but I, I have to keep that boundary of, hey, I love you. And I, I still love you no matter how you're living your life. But I'm, I can't meet you there, you yeah. know? Uh, and so it, it, it can create barriers. Yeah, I, I think, I, I do think that when we are out of touch with culture, if that makes any sense, um, when we're out of touch with culture, it gives us the opportunity and the ability to be in touch with people's real issues, if that makes any sense. Now, let me let me come back to that in just a second, and don't let me stray too far. I, I also think it's easy for us to become acclimated to a church culture, um, kind of a pseudo-Christian culture, and to live in that world, and to, and to, because of that cultural influence, neglect the real issues that people are dealing with Otherwise, I think when we hear God's voice, it becomes a lot easier to say, you know what, I don't know about that show. Tell me about it. How, what, what are the issues that people are dealing with? Is that something that you deal with? Let's talk about that. Um, it, it allows us to interact with people at their heart level rather than just the, the whatever is going on, on culturally. Um, That's a good point. So Connecting to people where they are and so because that's the point right is right. loving them and connecting with them um but sometimes you have to be careful too you yep. know uh of and maybe you're a new believer that maybe your boundary has to be a little bit stronger right too um well i i think anytime that you recognize a voice um whether that's a voice from a particular tv show or a musical artist or uh, you know movie whatever when that begins to impact the way that you think um, that's, that's a good, um, warning to say, probably need less of that and more of God, more, more scripture. Yeah. So, yeah. More Jesus. More Jesus. Yeah. That's right. Oh, we've been talking a long time, haven't we? Okay. Um, Let's wind it up. All right. Sounds good. So I think that we hit most of the high points. Is there anything that you want to, is there anything that you feel was unsaid? Nah, kind of I'm good. I, f I feel like we've probably talked long enough. Okay. Enough. <laughs> Thanks for watching though. Yeah, thank <laughs> Thanks for you. tuning in. Um, and, you know, just remember that the Sri Lanka trip um, is happening the day that this comes out. So just be praying for all the missionaries, um, the, for the missionaries and for everybody who's going over there to do God's work and that the Holy Spirit would be working in them. Yeah, let me let me just say names. Oh, yeah. So Rick Rubel, Deb Rubel, Don and Kim McKeel, and Larry Carter. That's our team. All right. Thank you. Um, and thanks for watching. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Um, come to church. Give us high fives and do all the things. Uh, 
Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>